Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to the show if they have not already done so. Uh, online over at quicksurf.com, you uh, the show notes for each and every episode has a, a subscription link for an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed. And you can also uh, subscribe over at YouTube, blip.tv, Daily Motion. You can find us online at uh, Stitcher Radio as well as uh, tunein.com. So a variety of ways uh, to uh, watch and or listen to the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff that I found for this episode. Starting off over at makezine.com, today on Maker Camp, playing with plastic and Raspberry Pi. That's right. Uh, the Maker Camp for this episode is a twofer. It starts at 11 a.m. They're going to talk about vacuum forming, a process in which a sheet of warmed thermoplastic is shaped by placing it in a mold and applying suction. Pretty neat. You can uh, see it all around you, most prevalently in product packaging. And uh, Adam Harris will show how useful the technique is by using a humble jar of peanut butter. So pretty neat. Uh, also, uh, let's see here. After that, they're going to come back uh, with a Raspberry Pi guru and mate contributing author Matt Richardson at 2 p.m. for a special Pi workshop. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Something to look forward to for sure. From Ars Technica in the Ministry of Innovation slash Business of Technology section. I love their sections. Uh, Welcome to the future. New Zealand approves a permit for Jetpack. That's right. The Martin Jetpack, uh, which has been under development for quite some time now. Well, it you can now get a permit for this thing in New Zealand. We all could all be flying around in jetpack sometime soon. If you pony up $150,000, New Zealand and Australian media reported Tuesday that the country's Civil Aviation Authority has granted approval to the Martin Aircraft Company for an experimental flight permit, which could pave the way for broad commercial sales. The test flying was subject to the strict limitations covering required safety procedures. Other restrictions included that it may not be flown more than 20 feet above the ground or 25 feet above water and is limited to two specific test flight areas over uninhabited land. So not quite uh, as far along as we all hope it would be, but still pretty neat nonetheless. I think it's cool. I want one. From readwrite.com, three projects that aim to unleash girls' inner geeks. That's right. Long underrepresented in science and engineering, women are badly in need of a girl power up. There simply aren't enough of them to fill voracious demand for technical jobs in the market today. Well, there aren't enough engineer quality anythings to fill voracious, you know, fill the, the job needs. Um, by 2020, there will be 1.5 million too few co U.S. college grads to fill the rising number of highly skilled jobs. Women could make a good chunk of that short shortfall, but only if more of them enter the pipeline. As of 2009, women earned just 31% of degrees in STEM. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Sorry. Mm. Uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And women scientists and engineers only comprised 35 and 15% of the total, respectively. So she plus plus is uh, the Stanford Collective She++. It was founded in 2012 by Stanford students, Elora Israni and Anya Ar Agrawal. If I mispronounced your name, I'm sorry. Sometimes guys are dummies. They aim to encourage young women to enroll in their first computer science class. So pretty neat. Uh, Wish is another one. Women in STEM high school aerospace scholars. Pretty cool. It's a NASA summer immersion program for high school girls focused on space exploration. Pretty neat. 
and tech choices. The Girl Scouts of Northern California has teamed up with science and non-tech profit TechBridge to create tech choices. It's a curriculum designed for girls in grades kindergarten through eighth in low-income Bay Area communities. Participants take on projects in engineering, electronics, circuitry, and robotics, travel to science museums, tech companies, universities, and meet with women in the science and engineering field. So pretty awesome. Uh, If you are a girl, I highly encourage you to get in on the geek because geek is cool. From The Verge, here's how NASA will use a 3D printer on the U on the ISS, the International Space Station. That's right. NASA says it will be ready to launch a zero-G ready 3D printer into space in June 2014 in time for the fifth SpaceX resupply mission to the ISS. The agency has prepared a video complete with Upbeak Muzak that details not only how astronauts will be able to print objects on demand, but why they might need to do so in the first place. Oh, yeah, they do need parts up there. Uh, As astronaut Timothy T.J. Kramer puts it, 3D printers will enable Star Trek replication right there on the spot. Not quite Star Trek-ish, but still pretty awesome nonetheless. Definitely check this out. It's a YouTube video. Uh, I highly recommend that you watch it. Pretty neat. From Uber Gizmo, Mars One gets over 100,000 signups. What? That's right. Is life on Earth so bad that you would want to make a quick break for it and head off to the red planet? I don't. I'm plenty happy right here on Terra Firma. If you have answered in the affirmative, thank it not. If you have answered in the affirmative, thank it not that you are some sort of weirdo, as there is a growing number of folks numbering more than 100,000 already who have applied to the Mars One project, where they would leave Earth permanently and help colonize Mars. So, unbelievable. 100,000, they've got no shortage of applications, I can tell you that. That's amazing. 100,000 people? I would have thought maybe a couple of dozen or maybe, you know, a couple of thousand, but 100,000 plus? Phew. A lot of people don't want to live here on planet Earth, that's for sure. From Tom's Hardware, Intel's 12-core Xeon with 30 megabytes of L3 cache. The new Mac Pro's CPU, wow. Woof, 12 cores, 30 megs of L3 cache, yikes. It is the Intel Core, let's see here. The Intel Xeon E5 2697V2. Intel was not involved in the story of this writing. It is a fairly lengthy read, but still, that is a beast of a processor 12 cores 30 megs of l3 cache i yeah yeah i want one now definitely give this a read especially if you're into like the really like geeky hardware that's pretty awesome uh from uber gizmo the hyperloop transport system un- has been unveiled by elon musk elon musk is of tesla fame so for those of you who are familiar with tesla the car electric car company elon musk is behind that he's also behind this Hyperloop transport system. He is a California billionaire. He recently uh, removed the wraps surrounding his vision of the future, which obviously involves the Hyperloop transport system. The Hyperloop transport system will theoretically rely on solar-powered network, a solar-powered network of crash-proof capsules, which is capable of allowing folks to commute between San Francisco and Los Angeles in just half an hour. Just in case Elon Musk sounds familiar to you, He's the CEO of electric car manufacturer Tesla Motors, Inc., and with the Hyperloop transport system, should it be successful, would definitely change the way intercity transportation is done. So, pretty neat. Two major obstacles here, though, is financing and safety. It cost about $6 billion, and the construction would be 7 to 10 years. So, you know, obviously it's uh, it's quite a ways off if it ever gets off the ground at all, but still, I think it's pretty cool. It would be awesome if we had something like that. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. And uh, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will talk with all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.